I'd like to show you how to uh, use these modifier options and the hands-on setting, but before I start, I'm going to use this image and this image here of the little cup and of, this is um, a city street in Paris. Um, they are available on the Open Graphic Arts website and also on the Google Drive. So whichever option you're using for getting these images, you can go there, so pause the video and grab them. But I'd like to preface that by saying, you can use these for these uh, these skill sets for any images, and so what I'm going to do right now is not particularly defined by the characteristics of these images. I'm just going to kind of use these as example images. And so the first um, thing we need to do is we need to make a selection. And in order to modify or refine a selection, you must first have a selection. And so on the tools panel, I'm going to grab uh, I'm going to grab the rectangular marquee tool just because I want to kind of emulate the examples that were in the slideshow where I was able to create a border. Um, out of using a desaturated or um, an, a levels adjustment and then a colored um, border selections adjustment. And so I'm going to grab that and then I'll zoom back out. And you want to click and drag and you want to select the area that defines the border that you want. However, keep in mind that when I'm making the selection, I'm selecting the interior part. And so if I think if I think I have the outside selected, I don't. I have the inside selected. You can always switch that by going to the select menu and choosing inverse, and now you have the outside selected. But I'm going to undo that, Command Z or Control Z, because to emulate the example from the slideshow, I'd like to desaturate the inside, and then I would like to use the modify border command to be able to put a little bit of a border between the desaturated interior where I might be putting some text or some typography and the saturated outside border part. And so um, we have not talked about adjustment layers in detail yet. You're not required to know them yet. But I like to use them because they have non-destructive editing. You can apply an adjustment layer to any layer, but I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my background before I get started because we always want to make sure that we don't destroy the original. And the best way to do that is to save a copy of your file or to duplicate a layer before you edit. At the very bottom of the layers panel, there are different icons that represent different things and so far I've mentioned that this FX button applies special effects like drop shadow, bevel, and boss, etc. Um, later in our slideshow we'll talk about this option here, it's the add layer mask icon. But right now I want to use this, bot this button right here and I like to say it looks like a black and white cookie from New York City, they're really popular out there. And it is the create new or fill, sorry, new fill or adjustment layer. When you select this a drop down will appear and then you can just kind of even if you don't know what they do, you can kind of click through and figure out which one you want to play around with. I'm going to use Levels just because that's one that I like. And what it did is it created a layer mask, which you don't have to know what that is yet. But it also activated this Properties panel. And if I slide this middle bar, this little slider here, to the left or to the right, I can lighten the image that's selected. Or I can darken the image. And in a previous video, I darkened it because it looked better. But in this example, I'm going to lighten it. I can lighten it a little bit or I can lighten it a lot. It depends what I'm going to use it for. Maybe I want to lighten it a lot if I'm going to put text in front of it, but maybe I just want to lighten it a little if I'm trying to create some contrast. You can also adjust the white point, making the how much of the image has the brightest white in the image. The more I slide this over, the more white I'll see in the image. Or you can adjust the black slider. Let's put the midtones back. And if you pull the black slider to the right, you're basically saying you want more and more and more of that image area to be the darkest black in the image. And so you'll see that the image gets really dark. But for this little levels trick, you want to just slide the middle bar, which is our midtone values, and you can lower them. Okay. Now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and close the property panel. And then I want to create a border around the outside. Maybe I'm going to put a color or a drop shadow or a bevel or whatever it happens to be. And so what I want to do is I want to go back to my background copy layer and I want to reload the selection. And so I'm going to go to the select menu and choose reselect and it will highlight the selection that I had just made. And you'll see that the selection is exactly right in between the desaturated inside and the fully saturated outside. And if I want to put a little border there, we can choose the select menu and modify and then border. Remember that when you choose four pixels that means that two pixels will be on the outside of the current selection and two will be on the inside. Let's go with like 30 pixels so you, you'll be able to see it. And so it grew my selection, it put a border, it rounded the corners on it and if I zoom in you'll see 
that half of the new pixels are on the right hand side and half are on the left hand side of the original selection. Um, for non-destructive editing purposes I don't want to edit on this layer so I'll create a new layer and I can fill this selection, edit fill, with a color and I can choose a color from the picker but if you hover outside of the picker dialog box you'll get a little dropper you could actually pick a color that's inside the image and then select OK and it will fill that selection I might want some more contrast so while I have the selection highlighted maybe I'll go back to edit and then fill and maybe I want a brighter color that's gonna kinda stand out more and then you can fill that selection in and now if I deselect either go to the select menu and choose deselect or you can do command or control D on your keyboard you can see that I've created a border around the outside of my selection. I may have even wanted to go even bigger on that and make it fatter, but I think for now that's fine. I could put something in the middle like text or something if I was creating some sort of postcard um, or whatever you'd like to kind of create with your, your cityscape here. The other image that I have open is the image that is the slideshow. It's the same exact image. And I want to use that because I want to show you how you can um, use it to remove elements from an image and kind of create a feathered edge or a soft edge so that when you copy it and paste it and put it on a different background it's not as harsh and you don't you can't tell that it's from another image as strikingly as you could as if it kind of had hard edges. So in order to select this I'm going to use the quick selection tool because I think that's the easiest way to make selections like this. The cursor is really small. Let's zoom in a little bit here. The cursor is really small right now so I'm going to use my right bracket key and I'm going to hit that until it's, it's much bigger. And then with the quick selection tool, you can just click. And see how I literally just put my, my cursor down one time, my mouse down once. It grabbed this whole corner of the cup. So it knows I'm trying to select the cup. And so now I can keep adding to it by clicking and dragging. And it will go around the outside of my selection. It's all the way down to almost the base now. Uh, my favorite key command is the space bar. If you push the space bar, and let's zoom in a little bit so it'll work. If you push the space bar, it changes to the hand tool and then you can kind of drag around. And as soon as you let go of the space bar, it goes back to whatever tool you had selected. My cursor is kind of big for this area, so I'm going to make it smaller by using the left bracket. And then just come in and try. I'm a fan of kind of slow and steady wins the race here, and so I got a little bit too much over here. So I'll use the option key, and I'll kind of make sure that I get rid of the stuff at the bottom, this little guy here. And I think that's a good rough selection for what I was trying to select. Maybe, maybe I'll try to get rid of just a little bit more down here. It's okay if it takes too much, you can always go back and add more. If you're having trouble getting the area that you want, change your cursor and make it smaller. The bigger your brush is, the more it's going to try to pick up. As soon as I get a straight line across there, then we'll be done. And it doesn't even matter that it's not straight because we're going to feather the edge. Okay, now that we have this selection, we can take a look at what our options are under the Select menu and Modify. And so if we go to Select and Modify, we've already made a border, but we could choose to Smooth. And so before we do that, let's take a look at, at what we have going on here. So I have a selection, and it is active, and it's around the outside of the shape. Let's switch. Oh, that's fine. But in some places, it's a little bit rough. You could, if you wanted to, use the Select menu, Modify, and then Smooth. And you could say Smooth, let's, let's do like 25 only, because that's a lot, and you should see a visible, a visible difference. And so it's smooth the edge of the chalice or the cup here. And so it's trying to create a smooth arc for the edge, which is going to mean that you're going to delete all the extra kind of humps around the edge, uh, which may be beneficial for you. Maybe that works out and you get a nice smooth edge. But you have to pay attention to the other areas of the image because down here in smoothing the edge, it's going to kind of ruin this this uh, corner here because now it's going to cut straight across it and you're going to see blue from the sky showing through. I'm going to undo that because that's not what I want to do. The next option under the select menu and modify is to expand and this is a really good option if you're just trying to grab something and copy and paste it somewhere else but you haven't really refined your selection too much and so if I expand by five pixels it will 
take my selection and make it bigger around the outside by five additional pixels. And so now I have a gap between where my cup ends and where my selection starts. And so if I was to copy this, Command C, and paste it in a different document, maybe I'm using it in this project here. When I paste it, let's put that up here. When I paste it, I have everything I would need to use this cup and I can figure out where it's gonna go. Maybe it's gonna like break the fourth wall here and it's gonna sit and break the border. But I would still have to go back and I would have to modify the selection some way because I have this unwanted white border on the edge. But the benefit is that I still have everything I need. I just have to do some future modifications. Okay. Let's undo that as well. Edit step backwards or edit undo. Um, if you choose select, modify, and then contract, it does the opposite. So let's contract by, let's say, four pixels. And so now if I zoom in, you'll see that my selection is less than what I want. It's on the inside of my cup here. And that's okay because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to feather. And so when we contract, we're saying we don't want as much as we have. But when I feather, it's going to feather it back out. So it's going to say your selection stops here but you're going to feather it, let's say, another two pixels. And so two pixels beyond here is going to feather from solid to being transparent, which is going to create like a fuzzy see-through border. So you don't want to do like 25 pixels of feathering because it will just kind of blur everything. But if you do just a little bit, it's okay. And what I usually suggest is that you feather half of what you contract. And so I contracted four pixels. So I'll go back and choose Select Modify Feather and I'm gonna feather two pixels and it doesn't look like anything happened but if you were to copy this or cut this so command X on my keyboard or edit cut when I whoops, hang on Let's switch that when I cut this you can see that in the void where it was it didn't cut a hard line it feathered the edge of where it cut so now if I go back to my other document and I'm gonna use the the cup in here and I choose edit paste or I choose control or command uh, V on my keyboard I've pasted what I wanted and it almost is seamless where it's blending into the background if I look at it really close you can see I've got a fuzzy edge to it so the more I zoom out the more natural it looks sitting on my image and so I could put it here and now I don't have to do that editing if I use the first option where I added extra pixels because I wanted to make sure I didn't lose anything, I would have to do some back-end editing. But if you contract and feather, you can eliminate the need to do the editing once the picture gets into the new file. Okay, I think this is a really great stopping point. And so you should stop and take a breather and you should make sure that you're comfortable with everything that we covered so far, uh, making all of your selections, all the different types of selections, and these basic modifying selection options or refining selection options. The next chunk of videos is going to talk specifically about the select and mask dialog box, and so it's going to be a little bit more complicated.